What's good, Grey Gang? This is what happened in the last episode. I'm gonna go ahead, pull it. Oh, oh, snap! Oh my gosh. There's a big snapping turtle, dude. Yes, that's right, guys. We had a stinking turtle. Tried to bite my minnow trap and eat all the minnows in it, but then he couldn't. He's stinking right there. Oh my gosh, he's right there. He's trying to turn around right now. I don't know how much time I got. Here, I'm just going to have to go in. I mean, I don't really have. Oh man, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to have to go in and grab him. Kind of scared, dude. I'm not going to lie, I mean, he is a turtle. Oh man, he's gone. He's gone. You see him? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Got him. I got him. <laughs> that was so easy. He's not even a big turtle. Okay, I'm bringing him over. There he is. There he is. A stinking snapping turtle straight out of the creek. Oh, man. First turtle of the year, boys. Thinking first turtle of the year. Oh, turtle of the year. Oh, ah, he's he's gripping. Ah, let me try grabbing the right way. I should have him right. Now. I don't think he can grab me. But man, out here minnow trapping. I come out here to get into the minnow trap. Start pulling it up. I seen this guy's head do just like that. He was just sitting under the minnow trap whenever <laughs> I got here. So then, you know, we went up there. We done whatever we did with the minnows. We actually put them in a pool pond in another video. And then we came straight back here. Come right in the creek, didn't waste any time. And then here we go. We got a big turtle that smells like a He stinks, let me just tell you. I don't know what he's trying to do here. <laughs> but he's not really a big turtle, and I'm not 100% sure what I'm really going to do with him yet. He's actually uh, clawing me to death right now. He can't get me. If I hold him by the stomach, he can't get me, so I'm perfectly fine right here where I am. He's not really as big as I expected. But anyways, guys, I'm actually going to put him down in the bucket, and uh, we're going to decide what we're going to do with him right here in a second. So, uh, here you go, buddy. There you go, Charles. Look at my finger. He didn't bite me and he didn't claw me. What he done by the way I was grabbing him was he took his back leg and pinned my finger up against his shell as hard as he could. And he has pretty strong legs. And I mean, well, I don't know. My my finger's still purple. So. Just right there in the bucket. I mean, bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to eat this guy because he is so small. But we're definitely not going to leave him here to where he can eat the minnows in the creek like he actually tried to do. And we're definitely not going to leave him near the pond so that he can actually eat my bass and bluegill. But anyways, guys, let's get in right now. We're actually going to take him somewhere where we may or may not catch him later. And he can live a good life if we don't. As you can see, we're actually at the river right now. This is a perfect place. I mean, it's not going to be in anybody's way. He's not going to cause anyone else problems. Yeah, of course, he may eat some bluegill minters out of the river. But then again, that's kind of okay. It's not so much that we don't... What's his name? Toby. Oh, yeah. It's not so much that we don't want Toby the turtle. It's just that we don't want Toby the turtle at this size. We'll be more than happy to come back and get him once he gets a little bigger. But anyways, I'm going to head on down here to the water, and I'm going to let Toby go. Come on, Toby. We're almost there. I'm just going to come in here with Toby. Let him go. And there he goes. He's just going to swim off right now. And there he goes, right down to the bottom of this stump, it looks like. I don't know where he's going. He'll have a good time, I promise. Okay, guys. So, Kendall just stopped the mule. He's like, I gotta go do something. And I was like, what? And he didn't tell me. And he just... He just got out of the mule and ran. And <laughs> he ran across the road. And I have no idea what he's doing. So, you know, I'm just out here driving on the side of the road. Look over the bank. And I think I may have just found the new pool pond. Um, yes, <laughs> I definitely just found the new pool pond. Sweet, I'll take it. There he is. What is he doing? I don't know, man. I just snagged it, though. I guess someone was just driving down the road and it flew out the back of their truck. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm about to capitalize on it. What are we going to put in this one? Snapping turtle. Yeah, we should have. Oh, it's too late now, though. Looks pretty new, too. No, I just busted it. Are you serious? Yes. Get Come on, man. Don't rip it. Don't rip it. Just get some duct tape. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. How are we going to hold it? I put the axe in it and it broke it. I'll bust it again. All righty. Here we go. And so now we're back at the house. We're going to fix these two things with the help of duct tape and Flex Seal. Flex Seal can literally do anything. I mean, it fixed the little sand castle. It's going to fix this pool pond that I found on the side of the road. We don't have any Flex Tape. It won't work as good as Flex Tape. No, it can't. We're going to need multiple layers here for a multiple big old wound. Nice. <laughs> Okay guys, now we got the pool pump. We've already put duct tape and everything on it. 
Fun fact, duct tape saved three astronauts' lives during Apollo 13, but Flex still saved mine. No, 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 not the dirt. Okay, guys, so now that we got that new pull pond, I figured it's about time to fill it with something. Oh, gosh, what in the world? I don't really know, but I got the minnow trap here, and I have an idea of what we're Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I about killed myself right there. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what I'm actually going to try to put in the pull pond. And I think I'm actually going to try to put crawdads. It's different. It's, it's a really different animal. It really is. They eat different things, and they're actually really exciting if you can get a bunch of them in there. Last year, we had some crawdads in the pond, and we legit had a feeding frenzy to where they would eat out of my hand. It was pretty wild, guys. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Now, if you just look at the scenario and the trap and everything you may think that well you're basically doing the exact same thing as if you use minnow trapping and you're right i'm literally doing everything exactly the same even same location same trap same i don't know water i guess i don't know but the biggest thing is bait i'm using meat meat based bait is the way you want to go if you're going to try to catch any crawdads because what crawdads eat are meat a lot of times what they'll do is whenever some random minnow dies somehow that's what the crawdads are going to eat right here i've just got a random place of ham i'm just going to throw it crunch it up a little bit i've got you guys sitting on my knee so it's not exactly the easiest to film but that's okay we'll figure it out we're still having fun and now we're ready to throw it on in now yeah i have seen crawfish traps to where you know they have bigger holes right here bigger than just a very small one but honestly there's not huge crawdads in here also what those are traps are for is like the big louisiana huge crawfish we're just going for crawdads okay crawfish crawdads basically the same thing but you know what that ain't stopping me today one thing i will say about finding crawdads is you want rocks son if you found rocks a little rocky creek you found crawdads and right here as you can see there's a ton of rocks that's why i usually come here if i'm ever trying to target crawls toss it right in there just like that that is perfect guys just lay it right there i'll tie it into this tuft of grass and now let's go on back to the house and we're actually going to get the pool pond ready for whenever the crawdads do come because what i'll actually do is i'll either give that like eight or 24 hours i may come check it at the end of the day i'm not really sure yet but either way whenever i come and get the crawls i want the pool pond to be ready for them so let's go ahead and do that i guess i'll uh, see you up there oh okay here we go now we're actually back up here at the pool pond we have the big pool pond then we have the one that we just fixed, like, you know, in the first part of the video. It's not the same day that we fixed it. I've actually cleaned it out a little bit. Unfortunately, there's a few parts that can't be cleaned, possibly because I flex sealed the dirt to the pool, but we're just gonna act like that didn't happen. Since it is crawdads, they're not gonna need a ton of water as much as, like, the bluegill do. So we're probably only gonna fill this pool pond up halfway. Also, I don't know if... I don't know if those seals work or not. Like, I'm not sure at all if this still has leaks in it. It very well still may have leaks. I don't know if we done the right job or not. While I leave the water hose doing that, you know, filling up the pool pond, we're actually going to go find some structure because structure for crawdads is the most important part. And it's really cool because they, like, prefer certain things. They don't prefer grass. They don't like sticks. They want bricks and rocks. That's what they live under, even in the real world, in the creeks, in the lake, in the hotels they get under the rock. So this right here, this little brick is going to be perfect. Because if it's leaning up on an angle like this, the crawdads can get under here and they can go in these holes. That is perfect cover for crawdads. But now we need to find a few more. We'll find some natural rocks, natural covers. But we're always gonna keep looking for bricks because I, they stinking love bricks, man. Like I had it last year, put some bricks. They love them. I had like two bricks in there, two solid bricks to where the six holes. I'd come over here and look and they'd literally be a crawdad in every single Hole. Let's check in on the pool pond. I think it's actually holding water pretty deep. Yeah, I mean so far so good This is like the funnest part guys going out here and try to find your friend some I don't know a couch or something go out here to the Ikea of the natural world <laughs> Oh, yeah, how did I know a brick was gonna be here? Definitely not because that's where I put it from last year. We'll throw that over there. Oh Mm. Almost threw it in the pond and busted it again. And then there's one more brick right over there. We'll use that one for sure. Here you come, little bricky. Oh, and we'll take this too. That looks really cool. A piece of concrete. That'll be perfect. They'll love that. They will absolutely have a field day with these. Oh, 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 oh. And that one. And those two. Oh, yeah, well, I want those two. And you don't really need a ton of cover with crawdads because keep in mind, well, they're, they're just crawdads. They can really only be one place at once. Unlike with the fish, how you need a bunch of different cover for them to choose whatever they like. 
Crawdads pretty much only like rocks, and that's how they want it to be. Here we go. This should be quite enough water. It's almost halfway the pool pond. I'll go ahead and close it underwater. That way we don't make a mess. Ah, oh, gosh, I did it anyhow. But I'll come over here, get the bricks. I just washed them off that, well, I thought I just washed them off. Oh, well, they'll be okay. Come right in here, take the brick, set it down right there. And then as soon as we can put crawdads in here, I'm telling you, he will come right in there and just sit there and wait. We'll get a few more of these rocks though. We'll get this one, a natural one. We'll take this one right here, set it right there so that only small crawdads can get under it. And then we'll use this one right here and put this rock on it so that crawdads can go under the rock. And now the pool pond is ready. And now the pink pond is ready for crawdads. All we gotta do is wait about eight hours, like I said, eight or 24. I'll go back, check the trap. If we got any, we'll bring them up. We'll put them right in here. It's gonna be really fun, guys. I really have a lot of confidence in that ham. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I love the ham. And there's no doubt in my mind that the crawdads will too. Hashtag confidence. Hashtag I know my crawfish. Hashtag give ye your last haul, son. <laughs> okay, that ain't good. Okay, here we are, guys. There's the minnow trap at the water is actually a lot muddy it rained last night and muddied up the creek let's see if we got anything i did come back and check it last night about eight o'clock and we didn't have anything as i come back here today and check it and we do not have any crawdads are you kidding me what even is this i mean i was thinking coming here with ham and i don't even catch a crawdad all i catch is a uh, two little minnows yeah well one's little one's pretty big actually that's okay we're actually going to take these guys back and i guess put them in the normal pool pond as for the pool pond for the crawdads we'll just wait on that i mean we'll just have to come out another day one thing that i didn't think about that i actually am now is that now i'm realizing that crawdads hibernate at 52 degrees which means if the water in the creek is colder than 52 degrees they still may come out but they're really they're like they're not going to come out <laughs> they're going to stay in a crawdad hole as long as they can until the water warms up anyways and i mean even though i'm out here wearing short sleeves the water doesn't change that fast so i guess it's just a little bit too early in the year for that one minute 37 seconds later first we'll start off with the little minnow just dump him in there let him swim off just like that. Now I'll come in here and get the big minnow. And let me tell you guys, like he's stinking huge. This man's a this man's a tank. We'll let him go just like that. There you go, little buddy. Hope you have fun. What I do want to encourage you guys to do right now is go over and check out kindlegrade1.com slash shop. It's where you can buy my merch. Right here is one piece of merch. This is like the SSOG. Just go check it out. If you want anything, it supports the channel. Keeps us out here doing what we're doing. Or keeps me out here doing what I'm doing. But still. But anyways, Grey Gang, I tell you what, I will see you some other day, but probably not tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching Kendall Grey. Be sure to get your merch at kindlegrade1.com slash shop. And also subscribe, hashtag Jesus, hashtag Greg Gang.